Hello everyone and welcome back to another wonderful episode of Historical Recreations. Today we'll be creating a miniature diorama of the catacombs below the streets of Paris. Travel backwards in time with me now and I'll show you how I created it step by step. Join me. materials needed to create our catacomb today, you have to make a very important decision at the beginning of your creation to either purchase the little skull beads like this. You can get a whole entire bag of these online for about 400 pieces for about $15. Or do you want to cast them if you have a very special skull that you like by purchasing one bead or materials you can actually create a rubber mold like I had just did this. Now if you haven't seen my tutorial on how to cast uh, certain objects like toys and stuff like that, please scroll down you'll find a link in below on how to do it. And over here I'm showing how I'm using the interduplicast part 1 and part 2 A and B mixed together. If you're going to create the skulls you're also going to need a bag of plaster of Paris, a bowl and a spoon for mixing and you can go on. If you just choose to use the beads then just forget about that and jump right over the plaster of Paris part. You will also need today for colors titanium white number 901 Burnt Umber number 925, which is my favorite of all the colors, and Black number 999, they're all acrylics. For the femur bones, you're going to be using a bag. I'm using here Air Dry Clay Amos brand, which I absolutely love. The color is white, and a large collection of Q-tips, which will break in half to create femur bones. Some sculpting tools, and I'm also using etcho blade, always be careful with knives, and some floral foam to create our caves. Anything else is in the tutorial. But today I get to show you a little bit about what we're going to do with the floral foam. Um, first of all, we want to make it look like it's inside the catacomb, so we're going to have to cut like a cavernous type of rooftop on this and I've studied a lot of pictures of the catacombs in Paris and it kind of has like a nice curve to it so I guess it's going to be like that so we're going to have a roof area and then we're going to have a nice curve what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a bones landing area for the well, the thigh bones and the femurs and all the other stuff to like lay on top because there is one top layer uh, of bones and then we are going to have to cut this down because we have oh, this maybe even cut this in like this because we have got a foreshortening of materials so we have got the skulls and we also made up very short versions of the the bones so that's going to be like our layers i'm going to like take this and make this a little bit darker here for you so we can see what this is going to look like and like that that's going to be how we're going to have to cut that foam in order to produce the layers that we need. So these are the bones, these are going to be the skulls, we're going to have bones, skulls, bones, skulls, and that's how we're going to build it. A block of floral foam out here, and what I want to do is put a piece of this OHP plastic over it. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be creating a template, and this template will be used for all of our cuttings. So let's now cut that to size. Okay, so I rough that out with permanent magic marker. We are now going to cut all three of our floral foam blocks in this particular pattern. So now we can create our cavern. The plastic sheet, now using nothing more than a pencil, we're going to make a small Groove, which mark everything. Floral foam is an amazing product. I highly recommend wearing a mask when you're using this. Just uh, one of those COVID-19 masks are just fine. And because they have, there's a large amount of particles that come off of this. So I'm wearing a mask right now. So let's uh, now cut all the blocks out the same size. 
very important things to share with you today. I tried using the Echo Blade to go in and cut the foam. However, it wasn't deep enough. I ended up using a kitchen knife, and that was it. Another very important thing is you need to wear a mask whenever you're using floral foam. You cannot see it, but there's microscopic dust that comes off of those foam blocks. I highly, highly, highly recommend recommend wearing a mask. If you were to work with this as I had done in the sunlight, you will definitely see the particles. Next thing is using the template that we had created, score it twice, once on the front and once on the back. And I'm going to show you why, because I had to find a way to trace that out to create this cavern. Okay, so I have blocks here. Uh, that were cut. I had to trace it on this side and I had to trace it on that side. That is how I created this beautiful cavern. Look in there. I, I, I just love the look of this. I can't wait to now start putting all of this together. All right, so now with that in mind and those tips, let's continue onward. Now our three cavernous pieces. I'm going to do something very important. I'm going to use some of this floral wire. Wow, we're just, we should have just opened a, a flower shop here. But I'm going to stick one of these wires through here, uh, through the side, and I'm going to reinforce the three pieces uh, in two or three places. I'm going to stick one right here, I'm going to stick another one right through here and down here, and possibly one through the base. And those are going to keep those all together, and then I'm going to be using a hot glue gun to glue the three pieces. And let's do all of that now. You have your piece all hooked together. I have the wires going through here and I hot glue them in place. I just cut off the end, snip, 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 with one of my wire cutters, snip, 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 snip. And I'm also using one of these tool, tools from a clay sculpting thing to create the chisel marks that you would find in the catacomb in Paris just by scraping the surface. Look at this. Just by scraping the surface of what we had already cut out. Look at this. This piece is going to fall off. This is great. That's just going to add to it. Look at this. Just by scraping that surface creates the chisel marks that the men that were using look like. All well, that sculpted away. Let's now focus on the color of the stone. Today I'm using a black number 999 and I'm also using a titanium white number 901. And we're going to mix together a very dark stone because if you look inside of the catacombs, it's dark. And basically that stone is not penetrated by light. So it's almost black. So we're going to try to make it look like stone, but at the same time, we're really going to focus primarily on this black. All right, so let's mix up that color. I'll be demonstrating how I created the femur bones for the wall, which look like this, which will be stacking up very easily. You're going to take your Q-tip swabs and you're going to either break off the end or to save your big fingernail, just cut them off with a pair of wire colors. Now once you get that in place, you're going to need some of your white air dry clay. I'm using an Amos brand today, which is one that I love the best. And just take a little bit of that. And we're just going to wrap around the tip of the Q-tip until we get enough on there. We're going to smooth it down, coating it, leaving the top bulge, okay, and creating a bone. Now, once you create that, and since the clay is soft, I use the ends of a pair of tweezers to create the extension of the bone piece that connects to the bones. So with that, once these are dry, you can put them in a drying container like this. This is nothing more than some foam put aside. And then you can use your burnt umber number 925 and do a soft wash on them and then let them dry. Other than that, we can build.
on the earlier part of my video I had talked about just being able to push them right in that's why I didn't paint the surface if the surface is here it's going to be hard but in that case we can start now layering these up very easily by just pressing them right into the foam like so so let's create you can see how the first layer of bones are already building up and I've actually stacked them up a little bit more over here to give you an idea what this is going to look like. So let's now dye and stain the rest of them and continue building. You can see we put in a really cool wall here and now I'm going to put the first layer of skulls in and this is going to be so cool so I'm going to get out my hot glue gun and I'm going to start placing the skulls in this first line. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting the hot glue on very generously on the bottom and on the back and I am following the shape of the bones that I have here. As you can see they're not perfectly aligned. Uh, the catacombs, the bones are all falling down and they just follow the shape of the bone. So I've been following the contour of the bones that I have placed down. What I'm doing is very generously applying the glue to the back of the skull and putting it down and then I'm placing it right along the wall. Okay, so what I'm working on today is I am making rib bones, which will be laid on top. Uh, if you ever look at the catacombs, they threw all of the rib cage bones and all the other bones that was not used in the wall that they had built underground. Uh, they had thrown them behind as support systems. So today I'm very easily, with our air dry clay, creating a long piece in which that oops, sticking together long piece over here I'm gonna need enough of this to create some rib cages so I'm cutting off some pieces and then bending them different sizes for different size people and laying them out on a small tray to dry what I did was I had created this random pile of bones, some pelvic bones, some broken shattered bones. This stuff is going to look really good when it's piled up and that's what you should create to show the top layer of the catacombs. And creating more femur bones and also four trays of rib bones plus other materials that we need to create today. So now I added on the second layer of bones. We have some skulls and some more femur bones left over, so let's add them. A very important element now is to encase our catacomb, and I had cut two of these foam cord pieces out here, these foam cord pieces, and I'll be hot gluing those on tonight and then filling it in with a little bit more clay. Uh, this is going to create a much more darker atmosphere inside of it because there's no light other than artificial light inside of And now we've got these two trays of bones now. All of the paint is dried so let's now start assembling them. Today we're going to use a very large pair of tweezers and some adhesive. Today, by using two pairs of tweezers and a bit of white glue, I am assembling the bones where they should be, each and every one of them, to their proper place. Well, I'm not going to lie, that took a lot of effort in using not only one pair of tweezers, but three of them. I have three pairs of tweezers here that I used to put all of those bones in correctly. So now we have the material and all the bones stacked up behind the skull and femur wall and then we're going to start working on the faux finish for the stone. Wow, now the 
place that is missing right here, if you've been to the catacombs, you'll know they're tiny stones uh, where hundreds of thousands of people have visited and they have moved uh, with the shuffling of their feet the stones. So what I have discovered was this really beautiful landscaping diorama material here. It looks really much like the material that would be inside of the catacombs. So let me now put a nice light area of glue and I'm just using here a clear glue and you want that to be as close to the bones as possible but no more than a quarter of an inch from the wall. And you can see how beautiful the stones look now. So let's now get an overall picture of what this looks like. And here is the final product, our beautiful catacomb oasis. Now some of you are going to ask, what does it look like by candlelight? Yours, Professor.